Pressure fermentation has definitely been all the rage these days. Now, there are a lot of products on the market that will allow you to do pressure fermentation, but chances are you may actually already have something to do pressure fermentation in your brew house. If you're kegging, the corny keg is definitely a vessel you can pressure ferment in. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert it for pressure fermentation as well as regular fermentation using a couple things maybe you haven't seen before. How's it going? My name is Brian. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing and see how-to videos just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. Now, the corny keg is probably the second cheapest option for doing pressure fermentation. I did a video not too long ago on the Firmzilla All-Rounder, and I'll put a card up here for that video if you're interested in checking that out. But the one thing about the plastic containers that are rated for pressure and doing pressure fermentation, if you read the fine print on the label and read the manual, those vessels are actually recommended to be hydro tested, which I'm not 100% sure how to perform that test, or it says to replace them every 24 months. So that would be the, the plastic container. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, if you don't replace it, you're going to have some kind of catastrophic failure or whatever, but it does say to possibly replace them every couple years. So when you factor in replacing those every couple years, maybe the corny cake is the cheapest. I don't know. I want to show you first how to ferment in it in a non-pressure situation and what my recommendations are for that. And then we'll do the pressure fermentation. There's a couple different ways you can achieve this function. And that is the dip tube needs to either be shortened or replaced because when you're fermenting in a corny keg, you're going to have a lot of the trub and all the things in the bottom of the keg that you don't want to pick up whenever you're done fermenting and you want to transfer it to a keg or whatever, whatever vessel you're serving in, bottling bucket, whatever. There's like a destructive way and then there's a non-destructive way. Uh, the destructive way is taking the dip tube out, cutting an inch and a half off of it, and then reinstalling it so that it's sitting above the bottom. And what you're gonna need for that, there's a couple different sizes of sockets for most of the kegs that we come across. That is a 7 8 and 11 16 I just recommend that you buy like a 12 point of both of those and then you're covered pretty much because some of the sockets or some of the keg posts are 12 point, some of them are regular. So I just, you know, get a 12 point socket of each one of those sizes and you should be pretty well covered. So all you have to do is just take the, the liquid post off, pull the dip tube out, mark your inch and a half and then cut it off if you want to do it that way. There are some other ways that are also to do this. Um, one of those is a floating dip tube and there's several different options now. The more options have come on the market recently, but the one that I'm using here is the floating dip tube and it's just a matter of installing a, a gas post on the liquid side and then installing the tubing for the floating dip tube on that so that It'll float at the top, kind of like the Firmzilla or the, the All-Rounder. It's a floating dip tube, so it'll float at the top, which is kind of nice because, you know, we all, if you ever watch a fermenter, the, the beer, clearest beer is at the top. So if you use this device, it's always nice. You can draw the clearest beer first, and then as it goes down, obviously, you might get a little cloudier. But what my recommendation is, is to cut the tube off on whatever device you're using, whatever floating type you use, and make it so that it actually stops and comes to like a dangle where it's not actually touching the bottom by the time you, you know, by the time you get down near the bottom, you want it to stop actually pulling liquid out so that you're not getting all that trub and everything in there. Now for doing a non-pressure fermentation, there's a couple different things you can do with that. You can either use an airlock or you can use a blow off tube. Now they both kind of use the same thing. Um, I have found that if you pull the pressure relief valve out of the lid on the keg, you can actually fit half inch silicone tubing over top of the housing that the, the pressure relief valve sits in. And the nice thing about that is whenever you push the tubing down over top of it, it will actually block off all those holes so you get a good, you know, solid pressure containment in the, in the vessel so your airlock and everything is gonna work. Now, the way that I put an airlock in the half inch tubing is pretty much everybody, you know, raise your hand if you've got some 3 8 tubing from an auto siphon or whatever. Okay, everybody put their hand down. <laughs> but so cut off a little piece of 3 8 tubing, put it on the end of your airlock, and then when you stick it down in the half inch tubing, it fits nice and snug. And that'll be a good, basically a good tight seal so that your airlock is gonna be nice and tight and sealed. Now for a blow off tube, and I kind of recommend a blow off tube for doing the keg fermentation because of the fact that there's so little head space Chances are you might have a blow off or some, you know, yeast or whatever coming out of the airlock. So for doing that, I do kind of the same thing. Take your half inch tubing, put it on the PRV, 
um, stem or the outlet, whatever. And then I use a 5 8 elbow. And the 5 8 elbow is really nice because it's pretty much about half inch on the inside. And you're not going to have any clogging issues whatsoever. If Even if the, the little orifice where the PRV valve goes becomes clogged and it builds a little bit of pressure, whenever that releases, you're going to have plenty of you know free-flowing tubing in order to be able to get any yeast or anything like that that comes flying out of there down into a reservoir that's got some star sand liquid in it. So that's how I would do that. Now, as far as pressure fermentation goes, you're going to need a spunding valve for this. And there are lots of different options out there. The blow tie, I've got one that I bought from an online store. I'll leave links for everything that I'm talking about in the video down in the description below. But basically, all you need to use for pressure fermentation in a, in a corny keg is just a spunding valve. And you put that on the gas side. And you've already dealt with the dip tube, either a floating dip tube or cutting off the end of your, your uh, dip tube inside. And so basically you're just going to set the pressure on your spunding valve to whatever your desired pressure is and ferment away. Now, one of the cons of fermenting in a corny keg is that you can't really harvest yeast. Another con is that you have to reduce the volume size of your batch. So you probably maybe a maximum of four and a half gallons, probably targeting more like four gallons if you're going to be fermenting in a corny keg, just because of the fact that you're going to need a little bit of headspace in there in order to be able to ferment. Now, an option to fix that, uh, More Beer actually came out with one of their torpedo kegs that is a six gallon keg. And that would certainly suffice in my opinion as a great five gallon batch type fermenter. Again, I'll leave a link for that keg down in the description and uh, you can go check that out. Now, a lot of you have asked me to do a pressure fermentation video and this is kind of a precursor to that. I'm gonna be doing some more pressure fermentation details in the future, but I wanted to kind of give another option for pressure fermentation. I know that I've done some videos on some of the plastic vessels. I wanted to show another budget-friendly option that was something that you could use long-term. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you're fermenting in a corny cake, what are some of the things you do to deal with the volume issue or you know, blow off tube or whatever. Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you found this video helpful. I certainly do appreciate you watching, liking, subscribing, all that great stuff. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.